Well, the White House says help is on the way for working families because of the newly signed Inflation Reduction Act, including lower costs for health care and energy. But will some of those tax credits get to the people who could use them the most? With us now, U.S. Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm. Secretary, welcome back to Fox News Sunday. Thanks so much. You have said in recent weeks that you hope gas prices will continue to fall, but now NBC is reporting this morning, and I'm quoting here, behind the scenes, officials worry prices could rise again as they keep looking for ways to get more oil on the market. Given the issues with refinery capacity and the war in Ukraine, can you give us, Secretary, any more certainty that prices will keep falling? Yeah, as you know, gasoline comes from oil. Oil is traded on a global market. And so we are at the whim, if you will, of what happens globally. However, this president has moved in dramatic ways to increase supply by releasing a million barrels per day from our strategic petroleum reserve, as well as calling on our domestic producers, as well as international producers. We will be at record amounts of production next year. All of that is to mm -hmm. say our Energy Information Administration has projected that by the fourth quarter, gas prices will be around 387 on average. Today, they're about 390, excuse me, 378. Uh, today they're at 390. They've fallen every single day of this summer. We're hopeful that that will continue. But uh, if China opens up significantly after COVID, there will be a more pressure on demand. More pressure on demand means upward pressure on prices. So we're watching what happens globally, but we are doing everything possible to try to stabilize supply and demand to keep those prices coming down. Yeah, we say at the bottom of the screen it says you know, gas prices falling below $4. And I think it's worth noting that in a lot of places around this country, like in California, gas is still right near $6 a gallon. So in different places, different situations. I want to keep going on. This article also goes on, quoting here to say, there is no indication that Biden's other efforts, like publicly shaming oil and gas companies over their record profits, calling an emergency meeting with CEOs and threatening to pull unused drilling permits, have had any effect on price or production, according to industry experts. So national gas prices, as we said, below $4 nationally on average for the first time since March. But the Treasury Department said last month the releases from the strategic oil reserves only lowered gas by anywhere from 17 cents to 42 cents a gallon. What do you make of that? Well, first of all, the prices have dropped, as you say, more than a dollar. They are now at three ninety. They were over five dollars. So clearly, there has been an impact on increased production. The president has done two things: the release of a million barrels per day is the biggest tool at our disposal. This is all about supply and demand. When Russia invaded Ukraine, that pulled millions of barrels off of the global market. Since oil is traded globally, we have to make up for that lost amount of fuel. And that's why the president has called for this increase in releasing and increase in production. And as I say, we'll be at record production, 12.7 million barrels per day by next year. Yeah. I want to move on to the Inflation Reduction Act signed this week. It includes tax credits for people who buy electric vehicles. But as you know, uh, one of the critiques here with these credits is that the prices are high, right? And the supply is limited. What is the practicality? Because it seems like there is a disconnect. What's the practicality for everyday Americans in this kind of, of benefit? Yeah. Yeah, great question. There's two, two implications here. One is, for example, if you want to buy a used electric vehicle, you can get $4,000 off at the dealership today. If you want to buy a new electric vehicle, there is a $7,500 credit for those that are assembled in America. So today, there are 21 models that are assembled in America. But additional restrictions will kick in starting in January, requiring domestic content, meaning that some the materials, the supplies for those vehicles will also have to be built in America. Why is this important? Because the president has said that we need to manufacture stuff in America, that we can't rely upon countries who don't share our values for the right. batteries, for example, for electric vehicles, which contain critical minerals, critical materials. He wants to reshore manufacturing. It's not just in electric vehicles. This Inflation Reduction Act provides credits to businesses to incentivize them to reshore in America. 
I'm the former governor of Michigan. The notion of creating and, and enhancing our manufacturing base, our manufacturing backbone, is huge. It will be in solar panels. It'll be in wind turbines. It'll be in transmission. It'll be in electric vehicles and the batteries for those electric vehicles. A whole supply chain and ecosystem, energy ecosystem, built up in the United States because of the incentives in this Inflation Reduction Act. But you talk about incentives and, and people, maybe it's the messaging, people quite don't quite get it. In fact, Fox asked people whether they plan to take advantage of the tax credit. And here's what they told us, and we'll get your response on the other side. Watch. I personally wouldn't buy an electric car with that much money. We're not going to even think about it because uh, we don't have the income available to uh, buy a new car, even with the incentive. What really is $7,500? against the cost of an electronic car. And really, you could make the same argument we were talking about tax breaks for adding solar panels, energy efficient windows, appliances, heat pumps. You know, what do you say to the families who simply can't afford this stuff in the first place? Well, number one, for your home, yes, there are significant incentives in this bill, which is great to reduce people's energy costs on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. So. If you are low income, you can get your home entirely weatherized through the expansion from the bipartisan infrastructure law, a significant expansion. You don't have to pay for anything. If you want uh, heat pumps, insulation, new windows, that is covered. If you are moderate income, today you can get 30% off the price of solar panels. Those solar panels can be financed, so you don't have to have the big out outlay at the front. And when they're financed, they're financed to the in a way that reduces your energy bill, even though you have solar panels. With this 30% off, it's a significant significant incentive. Same thing with if you are if you don't qualify for the weatherization program, you will be able to starting next year get rebates on the the appliances and equipment that will help you reduce your monthly energy bill by up to 30%. This is all about reducing costs for people. And yet the electricity prices continue to go up. Uh, Secretary, Governor, you know this because you have dealt with these problems. And, and how do you get electricity to various states? I was talking to Governor Sununu earlier, and he was pointing out that, you know, to build a transmission line, especially an interstate transmission line, you're talking 7 to 15 years, and the prices keep rising. Ridiculous. That is a major problem when you're talking about telling people to buy electric cars and then wondering how you're going to get them electricity to power those cars. Okay, first of all, number one, you are totally right about permitting. It is ridiculous. Part of the Inflation Reduction Act is driving toward reducing permitting times. That's another second bill that will follow in September. And, and the Inflation Reduction Act also provides incentives to lower the time and the cost and the wait time for permitting. So that was just given to us. So we want to accelerate this push to clean electricity. And the reason why we want it to be clean in addition to the climate is because solar, wind are cheaper in most places across the world, but it definitely in the but U.S. But they're unreliable. Other forms of energy. Secretary, they're unreliable. No, they're not unreliable. They are, you, they are unreliable on the grids because it takes a lot of energy, electricity to get them into the grid or, or fossil fuels to get them onto the grid. And if you don't have at nighttime, we don't have the battery power to store it. You have to use it or you lose it. And so it's unreliable in states like Texas, they found out. And, and that's a problem is we need to come up with nope. battery power to store that stuff. Okay, Texas is, is the largest producer of both wind and solar, or one and two. They are uh, extremely uh, important to adding clean energy to our grid. With respect to the intermittency, you say they're unreliable. They are intermittent because it doesn't always, uh, the sun doesn't always shine and the wind doesn't always blow. But the battery technology that stores that, that is also incentivized in this Inflation Reduction Act. The technology is there. We just need to make sure that it's implemented. So so the great thing is when you combine solar or wind with battery technology, that becomes like baseload power that is reliable, which is very exciting. Other forms of clean energy are also incentivized, like nuclear power, like hydroelectric power, like geothermal power. 
all of those are also incentivized in the Inflation Reduction Act, which will make us as a nation energy independent, which yeah. will make us allow us to get to our goals of 100 percent clean electricity by 2035 yeah. and net zero carbon pollution, which causes climate change by 2050. Yeah, it also seems to me like nuclear power has also been villainized and incentivized at the same time. Finally, I know this is not your agency, but as a former governor, I wanted to get your take. Your reaction to the CDC this week, kind of coming out with this mea culpa over how they handled the pandemic. Governors across the country followed along with the CDC day-by-day -day guidance, often following the mask mandates, right, the school closures. It impacted every American, and many are really still confused. So if you can put your governor's hat back on very quickly for us. Is this explanation enough for the CDC? Well, they are, they're taking action to correct, and I applaud any agency, any governor, uh, any news organization that, that decides that they have got to improve. And good for them. They've acknowledged it, and they're moving forward. Secretary Granholm, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. You bet.